So hi everyone, my name uh, is Benoit and I will, uh, we will be talking about SolidWorks PDM and Manage Web Access. Um, as you can see now, uh, just to make sure you, this is really like Solid Experience, it is Solid Experts, so we are the same company, it's just that Solid Experts and Mechanica, if you don't know that already, have been merging to become Solid Experience. The two companies were founded by Alex Average, who was the owners owner of both companies and you know with all the uh the activities of deso system slowly merging together with the, the platform the 3d experience platform well i, I think it was uh, alexa is a, a, saw this as an opportunity to get two companies together solid experts has been your solidworks software and supplier uh, and solution supplier for 25 years and mechanic has been the supply in katia and inovia solutions for uh, around 40 years, so um, the tree experience being now the platform that's been developed and everything will be together was a good opportunity for, for us to offer you our expertise in any of these fields becoming solid experience. So just to make sure you're at the proper place, it is solid experts, it is not called solid experience. Both are good still today, okay? So again, my name is Benoit Bilodeau, I'm the director of the product data management team here at Solid Experts or Solid Experience. Um, so I've been working here for the last 15 years, uh, mainly with PDM, lately with Manage, and in the future with the platform, with the experience platform. So I'm very happy to talk to you today and um, to talk about the web access. And I will explain to you why it came to my, uh, why it came to me, the what why it came to me the idea of speaking to you about this web access. Because if we look at everything we sell or offer you, uh, we have data management that's been around for many years with PDM and lately with Manage. There's the 3D experience platform that you hear about uh, with also some management and some other uh, software. There's a 3D design part with SolidWorks, electrical and PCB and draft side even for 2D, if you still wish to use 2D. There's all the analysis with all the, the whole portfolio of simulation products and um, as well as documentation manufacturing. We have some, uh, some software as well and the community. All that to tell you that we're, we, we have everything to, to help you from the design to the manufacturing phase of, of, your, uh, of your needs, correct? And we can really help you go through everything as being solutions, not only software. I'm showing you products right now. But the whole idea is to make you understand that we're able to assist you with any of your needs. But let's be frank here, let's be honest. We heard a lot about this lately, right? From us, as well as from the SO system, a lot has been talked about, a lot of talk has been around about the 3D experience of platform. And the reason is, is, there are good reasons for that. It is an actual platform that works today, but is aimed at, get, at getting better and better for the future. And eventually, uh, Deso hopes that it will eventually replace all the other solution, or maybe not all of them, but most of them. Of course, it's a path, it's a journey, as they like to say. So it's not going to stop today. And even today, we still are very committed to all the other products and software that we offer. And I want this to be very clear. Uh, it's not tomorrow that PDM will disappear. But all that brought to me this hype, the attention, it brought my attention on the hype the hype about the cloud platforms. You know why? Why the hype? Why is it that it is so it is so popular or in demand or why is it everybody wants to talk about that cloud? I mean, even for PDM, people ask me, can I use it in cloud? I'm like, why? You know? So basically, uh, there are some there are some good reasons. The software editor manages the hardware and the infrastructure. There's no maintenance, no backup, no updates or upgrades. It's all done remotely even if you don't want to, right? Uh, no IT, no whatever else. And one of the things that here has been one of the uh, reason why people would like to go to cloud is that the web browser is used as the interface, right? So that I found interesting because we already have that capability with SolidWorks, uh, with SolidWorks PDM Professional, which is the web two. They call it web two because the first few years of PDM, there was already a web access, but it was programmed to work with Silverlight. If you never heard of this, it's normal. It was um, the Microsoft answer 
to Flash, right? <laughs> you remember Flash? So Microsoft developed something called Silverlight. The people at uh, at SolidWorks were uh, developing a web access with this this programming language, if you will, and it never picked up. So they came up with a new one. They called Web2, and this one will work with any modern web browser. When I say that, you see the picture here, and I am using Vivaldi. Nobody maybe knows what it is, or very few know, but Chrome, Edge, as well as Firefox being the three main ones. And I will even go further, uh, Safari, right? Because it's going to work on a Macintosh or an, an iPad. So any modern web browser that understands the latest HTML version that is available will be working well with this. So my the idea was for me to show you quite extensively actually because it, it, there's not that many uh, there's no not that many uh, sorry uh, options or uh, functionalities and that I'll be able to cover this in about 30 minutes. So uh, I I told myself well it'd be nice for me to show you how to use this interface and I believe it is a way for me to tell you that we don't let you down, even if there are, there are some new technologies coming out that ease the people, ease the use by using the browser to do all kinds of, uh, of, um, of operations. Well, if you already are using SolidWorks PDM Professional today, you do have access to this technology. And if you are not using SolidWorks PDM Professional, uh, whether you don't use any PDM or you are using SolidWorks PDM standard, well, this may be will be for you a, um, a good uh, opportunity to, to look into it and see, well, how can I take advantage of this? So let's look at it right away. Um, I will just fire up my, uh, my web too. So you will connect to a browser to, uh, to, the, to your PDM vault. And this is actually the vault we use at Solid Experts. It's not a demo vault that I have on my laptop. It is really what we use, and it's on our server at the office in Montreal. So here, you could select different vaults if you want. If you have several vaults, you could select the one here and select the type of license which, uh, one, which uh, you want to connect with. Uh, keep in mind that if you are using CAD editor licenses or contributor licenses, both of them are called web licenses. It means that you can download and upload information where if you are using a viewer license, well, it is only a view license. And there is options to decide if you can allow people to download when they're viewing or not. This is something that is to be discussed when we implement it. So at this point, I will just use this web access. I will connect with you know, my login and my password. So again, it is not, this is not a demo vault. This is a real vault that we use. And uh, so I'm here, and this is pretty much what it looks like. I will not stay around there too long. I will quickly go to the place I want to go, where this is here. So here, I am in uh, a place where there's several folders. You notice that I navigated through this as I would with the hard client, right? So if I look at the client here, this is the exact same setup. I've got these folders, and in these folders, if I click here, double click, I will have these files. So I am in the same position here as when I click on this folder, I am accessing the same files. As you can see, the reaction time is quite good. And again, I'm connecting to a server. So it's, it's quite, in, it is easy to use basically. And if I click on any file, let's take this one. And I click here once the button shows up for the e-drawing, I have access to the part. Now, this is e-drawing in the browser, and I do not have to install e-drawing on my computer. What I mean is if you are using your phone, for instance, and just to show you what it would look like, this is the size maybe of a phone or a screen. Notice that it has been different, the layout is different. You have buttons down here to download or to delete or to check out. But you have access here to the same exact file with the same capabilities. So let's go back to the browser view. And I do nothing just by resizing 
the website. This is what it does. So here, I am here with my e-drawing that I do not have to install. And again, if you use a phone or a tablet, it will work. And it's quite fluid, actually. It works quite well. And then there's a button here that I can put it in the full screen mode. So I have access to all what I need on my part. I can measure information if I need to by clicking on the measure tape, changing whatever unit I want to use. And I can measure here between, let's say, this line and this line. And you have the information in inch. You could always change it on the fly to millimeters if you'd rather have millimeters. You can see this has been designed in millimeters, right? So you do have access to this information straight from the web access. Same thing here with the uh, the section view, which you can always you know move the plane around like this. So for a part, if you have configurations, you see them as well. And just to reduce it back, you put it back here. Let's go back to our folder, flashlight folder, and let's look at a drawing. Um, I could take this one. So now the drawing is here. I have the SolidWorks drawing available straight from my web interface, which means that, uh, for, for instance, if you are working in the shop floor, um, you don't need to install the PDM client on the computers over there. Now imagine you call us and you're saying that you want to upgrade to PDM 2020, and we tell you that it uses Windows 10, and in the shop you only have Windows 7. Well, why install the PDM client? Just put a web browser that works, you know, a modern one like Chrome, and make sure that you use PDM as an intranet. It doesn't have to be external, by the way. You can use it in an intranet if you find it too uh, vulnerable for external usage. Mind you, we use it externally, but we secured it with an HTTPS. So the, uh, the communication is encrypted from end to end by the, uh, the same way with your bank would do. So coming back to here, I have access to information straight from, uh, from the, 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 the preview of the, of the part. Uh, if we go back to this, um, to this assembly, and uh, we'll look into it a bit more. So uh, when it's an assembly, you have access to this little picking, pick, pick, uh, pick tool here where you could select any part and take it away like this and take the batteries out and look into them. You could also use the explode slide, which I like a lot. <laughs> I like it because if you use this, you'll see it's quite fluid. All this within your web browser. Okay, I really, really like this. So I, I believe we haven't spoken enough of the web access and the capabilities it has uh, for you to look into. And uh, you can simply go back here. You see here the configuration and you have the assembly with the parts that are going to highlight and vice versa. Okay. So this is all stuff you already know about eDrawing if you've used it. Uh, even here, you could uh, change the type of display and you know it's quite interesting. Uh, how it works well. So yes, um, again, if you've used the drawing before, there's no surprise here. Some people would tell me there's one function that's lacking, and I kind of agree. There is no print button here, right? But I guess you could always print the web page if needed with a browser. It's not exactly the same. I understand that. But you know, at least uh, you could have something. But I see the usage of web two into a paperless uh, shop. When you decide to go paperless and you install, uh, well, you don't install anything basically on these machines. You just make sure, make sure that the server has got web two installed and you're up and running. And again, it is included with PDM Pro. It is not something you have to purchase over it. It is included with SolarWorks PDM Professional. Uh, you need RL to install it. It is not something that's very expensive. In a in matter of time, if you will, and in software, it's zero. I mean, it, of course, if you deploy, if you decide to deploy this in a, in a in a shop, you might want to purchase more viewer licenses because it is going to become very popular. People will uh, will fight each other, each other to get access to a platform like this. Sorry. So, what else? Well, there's the data card. Data card is available as well on the uh, on the main. Uh, if we come here and we go into the uh, 
the, the real client where you have access to the same thing with the drawing you've known as well there's the data card and the data card is information about about the the, the flashlight itself so if we go back to uh the the uh the web browser it's the same thing you have the same data card you see you've got two configuration as well so they're here and the information is just this is just viewed differently uh, it's in uh, alphabetical order and not into this uh, special view that we create when we create data card it's a bit more fancy but the information is there as well as contains there's a contain tab that you know very well in the client it is available here as well so the contain is here and you can just uh, decide to look into subfolders or sub assembly sorry and, and and you see everything uh, as well as the where used now you'll know that this uh, assembly is used in the drawing but if it's a part that's used in multiple assemblies you'll see them all there as well the same thing that you would see into our uh, hard client here contained in the where used it's exactly the same thing and there's also the building materials that we know for instance here there's a bomb and there's another one called conception so you see that the we create different bombs in PDM. The administrator will create different bombs, and you figure, well, that's very interesting. I'd like to see them into uh, into my web access as well. But of course, so if you click into build of materials here, the bomb will be available. You can pick which bomb you want to see. The same that you do with the other one, and you you can decide you want to see the latest version of the files. You want to see only the parts or the top level. You have the the same options, and you have into uh into the web client uh sorry the uh, hard client the installed windows client uh no again there's no export capabilities from here of course this is some stuff th th there is some functionalities that you do not have with the web access but keep in mind that the web access is to give you access uh, and not to necessarily work the files out it's mostly for you to access the information without having to install a client and access it from any web browser again. So all this cloud hide that we hear a lot, I know there's a part of it that is, why can't we just use a browser? Well, I got news for you, you can do it with SolidWorks PDM quite well. You also have access to the history. Same history you would have, and uh, knowing who did what, uh, with the date, how, how, Probably not, but where, when, uh, why, if you've put some comment, please put some comment. Uh, and by the way, when we go into a folder here, there's, you've noticed that at the end, there's always this little cogwheel here that, well, you can always decide what you want or not, don't want to see. And these columns are usually handled by the admin in PDM and it just transferred to the web access automatically. So this, this is a quick introduction to the web access um, and um, it brings me some somewhere else so if we go back here for a second and i click here and i talk about covid19 so why do i talk about covid19 well suddenly we discovered that we needed to work from home we had to work from home in certain cases certain jurisdictions and um well it suddenly uh, uh, the IT uh, IT people from around the world were struggling to give access to documents, right? So one of the question is, is teleworking necessarily, does it mean necessarily cloud? Because the platform comes here, whether it's ours or any other platform, and it comes in saying, hey, come to the cloud, it's beautiful, right? It, it could be, and again, I am I'm saying that you know, the free experience platform is fantastic when we're, we're learning how to use it. As, as it gets better, and uh, I, I see fantastic potential with this tool. But today, if you're already working with PDM, does it mean that you need to go cloud? I don't believe so. So how to remotely access my files and content in my PDM vault? I just show, I've just shown you how. Now the question is, the remote PDM access, if you are using SolidWorks, well, my favorite choice is still to use PDM, the SolidWorks PDM client on Windows through a VPN with the SolidWorks add-in activated in SolidWorks because you get the most out of it this way. It is, it is live. You easily see what your colleagues are doing if you're working as a team 
and you get the more you get the information really like instant information all the time and also all the referencing you know what you know what solidworks are referencing can become a nightmare and then uh, you discover pdm and you, oh wow different reference i don't have to think about referencing anymore i can rename my files i can move them around in my structure in my folder structure and uh look at that all is good right well using the web access is a bit it's tedious it's difficult and it takes a lot of um of discipline if you will to really work with it works with solidworks and the web access imagine you have an assembly of 3562 parts you need to download them you need to know which one you're working with are they all in the same folder or are they in some surface folders separate folders with some being uh, library parts, toolbox parts, purchase parts. Understand what I mean? The parts from a project used into another project. So this could become quite tedious. So this is why my first choice is still to use SolidWorks and a VPN. I know that some people are suffering through VPN at the moment um, because you need to have a good, um, a very low latency, below 30 millisecond if possible. Latency between being the time it takes for a server to answer a ping that you sent. So if you send a ping and it comes back in 100 millisecond, which for you, you know, for you and I in real life, 100 millisecond is nothing. Well, for 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 SQL and for SolidWorks PDM, it is a lot, and uh, you need an instant answer, an instant answer for PDM to work properly. So. And bandwidth could be an issue as well. If you have a lot of files to download or to work with, the time it takes to copy into your local view with PDM can take some time. But the most important is latency. And latency is sometimes through VPN difficult for all kinds of reasons. It's the technology being used. It's the, the maybe your internet access. If you live in some spots that is not well covered, you'll suffer. Uh, if everyone goes through the VPN tunnel and some VPN tunnels force you to for force forces all the communications your computer has with the external world to go through the same tunnel where even if you go into uh you, you're looking at uh, you're looking to youtube well it will go through the vpn into your offices servers and infrastructure it is going to be difficult and then uh, pdm will suffer from that so that being said uh for the others for everyone else, sure. You don't need to set a VPN for someone who only has to work with uh, other type of documents in SolidWorks. Why? Well, I will show you how we can use the web access in order to just um, get the most out of it for people not using SolidWorks. And I will show you even after that, how can a person using SolidWorks, if you really have to, could do it, with all the warnings and the red lights and the yellow lights I'm sending to you, but I'll show that to you anyways. So let's look at that. Um, I there's a file here, you know, a doc, a docx. And oh, by the way, if you have a PDF as well, if you click on the PDF, the preview will send you, will show you the, the, the PDF. This is not a mistake. This is an empty sheet, by the way. It was designed as is. So. Um, and this is a PDF and you see it right away from the viewer and you can download it and then you can look into it. For instance, if we go back here and I click onto this Word document, if I click here, I got the preview. Sorry, it's in French. We'll change it in English, by the way. Let's do that. How can I change information into a Word document if I only access it through a web access? Well, the first thing you need to do is to check it out because when you check it out, it is reserved for you now. As if you've been using a PDM, you know that. If not, well, I'm telling you. Which means that if you go back to the uh, the one here, we see that now myself is the owner of this document, but not on my computer from the server because I went through the web access. Okay. So this, if someone else is logged in and sees that, they cannot check it out. They cannot work with it because I'm already the owner of that document. This is the first thing you should do when you plan to modify a document to make sure that the modifications you're about to do will not be overridden by someone else. And once this is done, I can download this file. So by clicking on download, 
I get to decide where I want to download it. And I'll just copy it into my temp file here, my temp folder, sorry. So here we go. It is downloaded, as you can see here on my interface. There we go, it's downloaded. So now, if I go to this, uh, if I go to my temp folder, here is table test.docx. So obviously this is not protected by anything, it's just a download. So if I didn't check it out, I still could open this document and modify it. But then if I check it back in and someone else in the meantime has checked it out, we have a problem, right? As it, so this is where the web access is not 100% foolproof because when you work with the PDM client, you actually are lively connected here and you're not copying this file outside of PDM. And then if you cannot, if it is not checked out, you cannot even open the document or it will tell you it's in read-only mode, okay? But in this case, if you work properly, if you're well organized and if, if you're diligent, you can use this very well. So by opening this document in Word, we'll modify this and we'll just change it. Oops, I, need, I got to activate my modification. So change it to English. All right, we'll just change it to English. Very easy. I'll save some time. I'll just do this and I'll just click this. I'm going to save this document and close it. All right, so it's done. Now I want to put it back into my, my web, my PDM through the, the, the web interface. So by coming back here, I'm just going to connect to the folder where I want to upload this file and just click on the plus button at the top corner here and do a check in. So what do I want to check in? This document. Then where do you want to put it? Well, I'm already in flashlight, correct? And I will enter a comment, which is changed it to English, which is the exact same sentence. I could add more files if I wanted. I could add files that don't exist yet. You could create some new folders as well. And I'm going to check it in. Now it tells upload complete, uploaded and checked in, which means that now I'm not even the owner of the file anymore. So if I look at the at this file and I'll see what happens, you'll see that now the preview will bring it to whatever is done, it's been done. And the history says here that it has been changed to English by me with the date and the time. Notice I did the French version of this webinar this morning with this, and I'm doing the English version with the same documents. So this is quite, this is very workable in, in, for some documents that do not have any references to each other. So it works quite well, actually. So for anyone who's got a CAD editor license or, or computer computer license, you're allowed to do that with the PDM and you could work from a Macintosh. You could work from a tablet. You can work from an iPad, from a phone and do all these operations um, easily without having to install any, any software. So let's see now, and I, as I've said, I do not advise to use this with SOLIDWORKS, but if you're really stuck, you know, you, even sometimes, you know, let's go, let's go and look at post COVID and you need to go to this place where you, a customer asks you, well, could you modify this and that? And you're like, my God, I'm stuck where here in, in the woods and internet is very bad. You need to maybe use your cell phone to connect to whatever internet provider you have. So using a VPN is out of the question at this point. So you could you could use a web access since when, once it's downloaded, you don't need to stay connected anymore, right? So um, let's try this out. Let's go back here into my flashlight and I'll grab a sub assembly like uh, this one. Okay, so this, just, just this part of the subassembly, uh, I'll, I'll take that. And let's say I need to modify the subassembly. Now, the easiest way to check it out is not by going one by one with the parts. It is to go to take your subassembly, go into the contains tab, and then select all of them like that. So it is six documents to check out. Okay, so let's say these documents would be in different folders or structure. 
uh, then you could do it that way. Otherwise, you'll have to navigate through each of the folder and check it out manually. By doing so, it is a lot easier. And I'm going to just check them out. And I'm going to download. Now, you're going to use download with references in that case, just to make sure that all the references is being downloaded. And it looks a lot like copy tree for those who are using it in, in SolidWorks PDM. It is like a copy tree or maybe a pack and go for, from SolidWorks. And you just take this information out and you download it, okay? So let's do this. By preserve, and I'm preserving the relative path, as you can see. And I will, you know, uh, just save it here. And it's a zip file, actually. So let's save uh, that zip file and see what happens. Great. So let's go back into... Uh, just to see something here, let's go back for a second into my real client. So you see these are all been all checked out. So this is good. And let, let's look at the temp file and the temp folder where I downloaded this. Okay. So if I want to um you know to zip it out, to unzip it, and it is now in that folder, well, you'll notice that I downloaded the folder structure. So if you ever are using a an assembly that has multiple subfolders for multiple parts of the library and all you'll be able to add them and it will uh it will respect whatever sorry whatever uh folder structure you had like here now when it is going to be the time to put it back it might be a bit more uh complicated but i'll show you how we do it with a simple subfolder and you probably have to test it with uh taking it back from uh because i could decide to Take it from this folder and make sure that I take the proper um, information. I'll, anyways, I'll show you what I mean. <laughs> what I mean, okay? Because I'm I'm talking and you're not seeing anything. So once I'm done here, I'd like to put it back. So I could decide to put back a folder. That's what I meant. I could decide to put back the folder called Utsi, which means tools. Or I'll just in this case, in this case, because it's very easy for me. I'll just put back the flashlight folder back into PDM. So once I'm here, I'm just going to press the plus button again and check in the file structure. And it's going to ask me, what do you want to put back? So you select the folder you want to put back and the files within the folder will follow. So if you have a folder with different subfolders for structure, you would take the most, the one that's at the higher in, in, your, in your structure and it should find all the subfolders properly. So that's the way I would do it. So here, let's go back here. And I know in, in that case, I've got nothing before I get here, flashlight. And I'm putting back flashlight where it is. So I am in the folder just on top of flashlight, okay? And I'm just going to import it. So it tells me, are you sure? Funny, eh? My, it's in English here, but then it's in French here. Anyways, it says, are you certain that you want to upload a flashlight? Okay, make sure it's something you can uh, you can trust. Okay. So before it goes ahead and does it, it will show you, hey, I've got this and you got this information you want to check in. Is it fine with you, right? And then you're saying, yes, let's put like something here. Um, another change okay doesn't matter so let's check it in all right so now if i go here everything is checked in if i go back into my client my pdm client i'm just going to tab we hit f5 everything has been checked in and normally we you see it got i got older version of it it was five a bit earlier, now it's six. We added a sixth one. So if I click here, for instance, and I go into history, you'll see that it's been checked in at 1435 and other changes here. So it has been done correctly. And if I go back into my web access, same thing. If I click here, I get the information with the history that tells me that I checked it in, okay? So it is possible. It is possible with a lot of, uh, you have to be very rigorous. You have to be very aware of what you're doing. And the software will not correct, will correct you or warn you the way 
uh, the PDM client in Windows is able to protect you from yourself. Understand? Here, uh, you're on your own. But if you're stuck and you feel confident, you and your team, and if you feel confident, people in within your team are able to grasp this and use it properly, uh, go ahead. Just be very, very extra careful. It's easy to do uh, duplicates working with that. It's easy to um, to do little mistakes, but in the end, keep in mind that it'll it will never overwrite a previous version. So worst case scenario, you just come back to the previous version of your files. So you're protected here. It's just a matter of it could get very confusing if you use it um, without being extra cautious. Okay. So that's pretty much what I had to show you for the PDM web. Uh, as, as for manage, well, I'm not going to dig, dig in too deep with manage because first of all, the manage interface is quite the same than the one that is onto that the, that the hard client because uh, it is actually using the same kind of access, whether it is from web or from the client. It is it is not like a different software. Where the web do you see the web two is really different from uh, from whatever uh, from the Windows client. In that case, when we use manage, it's not embedded within uh, Windows Explorer, so it's a software, it's an interface, and the one in the web is pretty much the same thing, right? So you have access to your folder, you have access to all the parts here, you have access if you click here on the information at the bottom, like it is with a manage normally, and you have access to everything like bombs and all. Funny, I put the interface in English and I still have some stuff in French, but sorry about that. But yes, and here you have access to different files. And uh, so so basically the interface with SolidWorks Manage is pretty much the same than the one that's out of the web. But I wanted to show you that it is possible to access Manage the web so it is and um, just all that to tell you again that we're committed uh, to offer to you our customers the, the choice the possible the, the, the possibility to choose between the future platform or the one that's available today with with its it, some of its uh, pros some of its cons but it is there. It is. It is going to be a very powerful platform. It is already. It already is powerful. But uh, you also have the choice to use the on-premise softwares, but make them available in the cloud, if you will, so that you get this. Um, this all the advantages of using the pros of using a web browser interface in the same software you've known and loved for many years. So hoping that uh, this was uh, a presentation that uh, could help you at least envision the usage of web access uh, with PDM or manage if you are using manage, uh, but mostly PDM because I know we have way more, way many more customers using PDM today. Again, keep in mind that it is uh, available with PDM Professional. Uh, and if you already have PDM Professional, you already have it. So go ahead and install it. Call us to have more information on how to install it. Again, we can do it for you if uh, needed. Hoping I could help you guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm available right now. Uh, I'm going to wait for you to ask all these questions. You can raise your hand. I'll then uh, I'll now unlock your microphone and you can ask your question. Uh, if not, um, well, uh, all is good. Oh, by the way, yes, um, absolutely. Um, yes, uh, by the way, I, yes, this question is, you can work in like in a hybrid mode. What I mean is that someone can work from uh, the VPN access and another user can use web access. There's, you don't have to go one way or the other. You still can you can mix and match the usage and the licenses will be grabbed accordingly to the amount of license you have available, but uh, you have no problem. There's no issue here if you decide that uh, one user in particular has got some connection issues, well, you can go web and the other ones can 
still work uh, VPN as they were using VPN before. And um, there's no need for specific hardware to install the web access. We can just bring it on the actual PDM server. The only uh, little things you might have to um, think about with the RT department is you want this website to be available as an intranet. So this is the easiest way to do it. If we just put it on, it's available. But if you really want some people from outside and you want to secure the access, then you need to uh, have, you need to talk to IT personnel at your location and see uh, what's the best strategy for you. But it, it is easy to, for us to do both ways. All right. So again, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.